which is developed with Django. Uh, we will uh, give uh, a quick overview about how it can be integrated and customized. Uh, so, uh, Genode uh, cannot uh, address every, every need. So, uh, when you need to customize it, uh, it's not recommended to customize, uh, to make modification to the uh, initial project because it would be then difficult to uh, add update uh, and, uh, and migrate it. And we don't want every time we create a new customization to repeat the, every time uh, all the uh, initial needed steps. So, in order to customize Genetto, uh, Genode, uh, we uh, usually create a Genode project. A Genode project, uh, you can get it in a, um, from a, a GitHub repository, and it creates for you a layout for standard files, uh, and you will get a Django project, a pre-configured pre Django application, and Genode will be used as a default requirement, so that it will be imported as a library. And then uh, inside this project, you will also get a, a Docker Compose ready to be used. And um, also, they can be customized if you need to uh, externalize some of the, um, of the components, like, like uh, PostGIS or whatever. Uh, so what can you customize uh, with a general project? You usually can customize most of the thing uh, you need to modify in the application. So uh, simply look and feel uh, the user interface. You can de define um, deeply uh, change the, the user interface. You can change the model should you need some other fields in the data sets or whatever. And then uh, you can also uh, extend the client application, the, the, the map store front end. Uh, usually, this can be done by, uh, since you are uh, extending you know, the, you, you using the uh, Django templating, you can simply replace uh, some blocks in the uh, uh, original Geonod fields. Uh, files. So, for instance, these are examples about how, how you can change the colors, the some of the styles, or also this is a simple uh, snippet about how we um, added new translations to the user interface. Uh, so these are quick some uh, showcase of some uh, home pages that have been that have been customized. Uh, here for this portal, we also had uh, different uh, filters uh, in the home page, which can be customized by the, by the administrator. So also a little change in the model was performed here. Uh, here uh, we changed a bit the uh, map store interface, creating, uh, for instance, uh, is the um, graphs for the historical series, along with the, um, let's say, default uh, time slide uh, widget. Here we use Genod uh, simply as the backend because the, the whole um, GUI was re-implemented again from scratch. Uh, from other integration, uh, we use the Airflow for pre-processing some data and then ingesting uh, uh, this data into uh, Genode using its, uh, its own uh, API. Same for QGIS, you can perform something at QGIS level and then uh, uh, change your data inside Genode using the, the extended API. Uh, about other integrations, Genod has uh, acts uh, both as a client for uh, what to and uh, as uh, a provider. So, for instance, we could have uh, a use case can be uh, QGIS uses Geonode for authenticating user, uh, while Geonode uh, uses the Azure uh, Active Directory for, uh, for authenticating them. So, here the, both the client and provider parts are, are used. What if you have your own PostgreSQL? Can you use it? Yeah, but simply uh, you need to define a role for Genode and give the, uh, and give the grants it needs for creating the various tables and update them when they are needed. Um, what if you have your own GeoServer with other layers? You can import them in Geonode through uh, some commands. Uh, 
the geonode will present them as uh, internal layers, but it has not all the information, metadata information for changing them. So probably uh, geonode will not handle them for in the backup restore part. Uh, same, if you have your GeoServer in which, uh, which you publish other uh, layers, you can uh, easily use this GeoServer as the reference GeoServer for GeoNode. Uh, simply, you have to add all the libraries needed, uh, authentication uh, uh, and, and so on. Usually, if you have another GeoServer and it's a read-only part, you can use it as a, a, a remote service. Uh, at the end, uh, when you want to deploy your node, if you want a standard setup, you don't have uh, anything uh, um, already existing in your architecture, you may want to go for the Docker Compose, which is ready to go as you create your project. Otherwise, uh, the manual setup is uh, usually um, uh, usually used when you have uh, different configuration, custom configuration, such as uh, multi-machine setups or servicing on, the, on different machines uh, if you want to integrate with uh, existing services. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>